Today we're going to talk about Messier 79, in particular one star in M79. This is an image taken by Jim Misty. And so this is a colour composite image, looking at the cluster in blue light, in visible light and in red light. And you can see the colours. So there's a few kind of whitish looking things which are kind of bright across the optical part of the spectrum. And there's some very red things, like this guy here and this guy here, and some very blue things. All these ancient globular clusters have got ages of 12 billion years old. Essentially, you're looking at exclusively really low mass stars, stars which have got a mass just below that of the sun. So there's different colour stars because they're all in slightly different evolutionary stages. So a star like that one, a star like this one, are the kind of red giants or what's sometimes called asymptotic giant branch stars, which are basically run out of hydrogen and helium in their core and left behind an inert core made of carbon and oxygen, about as big as the Earth. And then it's got a very thin layer, in tenuous atmosphere of hydrogen or helium. The blue ones are kind of nearer the end of their life, actually. The blue ones are kind of stars which are undergoing core helium burning, we think. And so that's the final main phase in evolution. They run out of hydrogen, but they get hot enough cores, 100 million degrees or so, so crazy hot temperatures, to undergo helium burning. But I can probably show you better by looking at this. So this is now just looking at the brightness of stars in the globular cluster M79. So the really bright things are at the top, and the, and the fainter things are down the bottom. And on this axis, it's kind of the colour information. So blue things are over here, and red things are over there. If a star like the Sun was in M79, it would be about here, just below there. So these are all much brighter than the Sun. And so all these stars here are basically red giants. So this is what happens to a star like the Sun, starts off down here, and it moves up this red giant branch, spend a bit of time up there, core helium burning at this point, and go down here to become these blue things, they move up this, what's called the asymptotic giant branch phase, and then very quickly, they shoot over here. So it's a, this is a very short-lived phase. These, these guys spend millions of years in this phase. Might only spend thousands of years in this phase here. This guy, we think, is the brightest star in optical light of any star in a globular cluster. You look pleased about that. Well, I, it's because I found out about it yesterday uh, when I looked through literature on this cluster. And you might go, well, where is it? It's this little guy here. It's not even got a name, you know. Although it's the visibly brightest star in this cluster, a lot of those red things, actually, in terms of the total energy given out by them, is kind of the same. So in the past, what we thought that stars did is that in that final whoosh, they move across, become blue again and bright. And we thought all stars, they're so hot that any gas that's around them that's being cast off from that previous phase in the red part of the diagram would then get illuminated by the thing producing a planetary nebula. And we talked about planetary nebula in the past. A few examples of Messier is a planetary nebula. We now think that because, although this is a relatively fast whoosh, it's slow enough that all that gas might be expelled by the star before it gets hot enough. And so there might not even be a planetary nebula. So when it moves across, it would just be another hotter version of what it is right now. So it would actually move down here because it will be blue. And then it kind of fades away. So that's a star on its deathbed, but it's not the exciting type that's about to explode. It's one that's just about yeah, to fade away. Yeah, it's one that will just fade away forever, whereas, whereas the guys which are about to explode are the much more massive guys in general, unless they're in a close binary and that produces a different type of supernova completely. So what we've seen is a supernova, an exploding star happening in a galaxy called M82. This is a galaxy that's been studied for many, many years. Um, it's one that many astronomers would recognize straight off the bat. 